All right, my good people, welcome to a new video. If you're watching, if you're not, and you're here in my class, you are here for like the past hour and a half. Anywho, so we're talking about diction and tone in this lecture. And um, tone and diction is everything. Really, the words that you choose, the way you say them is making such a world of a difference, right? You can say, I love that, or you can say, I love that. Or you can say it all kinds of ways and it means different things. And that my friends is tone. Okay, so diction refers to the author's choice of words. So what choice, what words is the author choosing and why are they choosing that particular word? Oftentimes we do this in our conversation, right? If, if we're trying to say something very particular, then um, we choose a certain word cool and tone is the way you express your attitude or the writer feels or uses his words with it's almost like the rhythm that we say the words in right so it's like music how do we use how what um inflection inflection inflections is that what they're called uh do we use to actually express the words okay when analyzing diction, uh, so when analyzing diction means when you are looking at diction and you're reading the words and you're looking at why they chose certain words, these are some questions that you should consider, okay? One, is the language concrete or is it abstract? Is it, is it a metaphor or is it what we say it is, right? If I look at this computer and I say, this is a computer, well, it's pretty concrete that this is a computer. Uh, but if I am saying the, you are like a flower that blooms in the spring, that's pretty abstract, right? It's more of a simile, it's more of a metaphorical sense of a language, right? And each one carries its own meaning. Um, are the words monosymbolic uh, or are they polysymbolic? Do they have one meaning and one symbol and that's it? Or do they have multiple symbols? Okay, or multiple meanings. Can you derive a series of meanings from these uh, conclusions, right? Or from these words? Yeah. How are we feeling? All right. So, do the words have interesting connotations? Hmm. Is there more than meets the eye, right? Is the diction formal or colloquial? Formal is more like academic uh, language, colloquial is, hey, what's up? How you doing? Right, it's more like slang, and it's more like the way we speak on a daily basis. Right, um, you may be reading Shakespeare, and it says Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? But you do not go up to a Romeo in the street and say, "Where art thou, Romeo?" You will say, "Romeo, where are you at?" Okay, or where are you? So that is the difference between formal and colloquial. Yes. Yeah. All right, is there any chance in the level of diction, uh, sorry, is there any change in the level of diction in the passage? Does it start off uh, with colloquial and then moves to more formal? Is there, does it start more academic and then loses its academic sense as you're going along, right? These are all things that you should look for when you are analyzing a uh, dictionary. And lastly, what can the reader infer about the speaker or the speaker's attitude from the, the word choice. So what can you tell by the person telling you the story? Okay, what from the, their words, right? So if I say, I love you, um, that means that I truly mean it. And you can tell that by the content, right? By the word choices that I have. Uh, whereas if I am saying something sarcastic and I said, oh yeah, I, I love you right? That mm -hmm. sounds questionable, right? It sounds weird. So which means that it doesn't mean what you think it means or what the actual words are saying. Yeah? Awesome. Uh, so what are some conclusions we can say? You know, are they concrete, abstract, all these things that we just talked about? Is it childlike? Is it mature thinking? Is it intellectually inferior, which means that it's very simplistic? Is it sophisticated? Is it educated? Is it illiterate? Does it indicate an epiphany, like an, a lightning of thought, right? Ah, that ah moment. Um, all right. 
Denotation means the literal uh, dictionary definition of the word, okay? So plump and obese both mean cal calorously challenged, okay? So both of them mean the same thing, but each one carries a different meaning, okay? So connotation means the implied or suggested meaning attached to the word or an emotional tag that goes along with the word, right? You can say someone is plump or you can say outright say, oh, well, you are fat, right? And they each mean significantly different things, even though we are technically we are saying the same thing, right? So in theory, you're using the same definition denotation but in actuality there is an emotional tag attached to each one of these words does that make sense yeah yeah positive and negative connotations of something exactly like um uh, i'm trying to think of like two definitions for example all the words that are listed there um mean someone that is heavy right but each one carries a different weight not physically <laughs> not physically um but emotionally right if you you call a guy bulky it's probably a compliment right like he's bulking up he's getting big but if you look at that guy and you say well you're you're really heavy that's not a compliment even though they mean the same thing right each word has a tag associated with it, and um, and so we continue. Does that make sense? And knowing when you're looking at diction, understanding these emotional tabs will help you know what the author is trying to say. Okay. So which words do we use to insult someone? Which uh, which ones do we use to describe someone? Uh, like uh, describe someone we like. Which ones do we use to describe a cute little baby? These all um, are um, part of diction, right? So you'd say this baby's so adorable, right? But if you're talking about a guy that you're interested in or a girl that you're interested in, you won't say she's adorable or you won't say he's adorable. You say he's good looking or she's beautiful, right? Or he's handsome. Whereas adorable in the sense we tend to use for babies. Yeah, and that's the difference. Does that make sense? The choice of diction contributes to the tone. Okay, so when discuss discussing tone, consider these questions. So what is, again, tone is the sound, right? The way in which someone says something can tell you what they mean by it, right? So when you are discussing tone, there are things that you should look into. And some of that would be, what seems to be the speaker's attitude in the passage? Are they angry? Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they infuriated? There we go. Uh, is there more than one attitude or point of view expressed? Is there a dialogue maybe? Um, is she nervous but happy? Is he sad um, but angry as well, right? So that we can tell by the tone, okay? And does the passage have a noticeable emotional mood or atmosphere, right? Looking at the words, do you feel like this is someone who's angry or sad or happy or whatever, right? And can anything in the passage be described as irony? All right, irony is not what it seems, okay? Um, something that, you, that would help you always use an adjective when describing diction and tone. So diction contributes to the tone. So for example, um, um, let me see if that give you an example. Okay, so a certain type of diction contributes to a certain type of tone, right? Um, sad diction or diction that portrays sadness contributes to a sad tone, yeah? Okay. So bouncing into the room, she lifted up the vicinity with a joyful glow on her face as she told about her fiance and their wedding plans. Is she happy or sad? She's happy. Why? Also, who, what, what is she talking about? 
Beyonce. Beyonce, wedding plans. These sounds like great things, right? So her face lit up, right? She lit up. Joyous, right? Joyous is a great word, right? So what are these the specific words that create a feeling of the sentence? What do we have? Lit up, joy, joyous glow, uh, fiance, wedding plans. These all contributes to her being happy. And what words did the author use to create the feeling of the sentence? Again, this is exactly what we said. They are all joyful words. The diction here showed us a happy, um, a created a happy mood, okay? So bouncing, right? Someone that's happy is bouncing around, lit, joyful, joyous glow, fiance, wedding. Um, these are all uh, a positive, yeah, positive diction that contributes to a happy tone or a cheerful diction that contributes to a euphoric tone or uplifting diction that contributes to a joyful tone, okay? She huddled in the corner, clutching her tattered blanket and shaking convulsively, convulsively as she feverish, feverishly searched the room for the unknown dangers that awaited her. Happy, sad, scared, right? All right. The frightening diction contributed to an alarming tone, right? The frightening diction contributed to a scary tone. She lays on the couch in a white evening dress, whispering softly in the ear of her fiance, running her fingers through his hair and gently nibbling his earlobes. Happy, sad, destroyed, crying, sorrowful, ah, flirtatious. Huh? What did you say? Content, yeah, content. Um, so we can say suggestive diction contributes to the seductive tone. Right, because as she is being flirtatious or flirtatious the addiction contributes to a seductive tone. Yeah, so you guys can see how um, the the words contribute to the meaning contribute to the tone right, so the words we choose contribute to how it sounds like Harvard accepted her allowing the children allowing this child, the opportunity to study in the same halls as many famous scholars before her giving her the chance to excel in her field in the best college in the United States. What is that? What to tone does it have? Huh? It wouldn't be, I don't think it would be excitement, but maybe proud yeah. or esteemed, right? So what they give us is lofty diction, this contributes to an elevated tone, okay? so. The, the diction and the tone really cor correlate together. They're related to each other. Okay, bursting through the doors, the flustered mother hollered uncontrollably at the innocent teacher who gave her child an F. <laughs> because, because the teacher was so mean. Get your student to study, get your son to study. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Is she happy? No, definitely not. <laughs> she said very, very, very did and and also entitled. Okay, so the fear of diction contributes to an antagonistic tone. Yeah, chill, bro. Anybody got time for that? All right, drawing the attention of his classmates as well as his teachers, the students dared to exp experiment with the professor's intelligence by interrogating him about the Bible. <laughs> Diction contributes to its tone. What is he doing? What is this student doing? Interrogating, ex experimenting, right? Attention, all of these are challenging, right? They show us that there's a challenge and it contributes to a confrontational tone, right? There's some kind of a fight going on. He furtively glanced behind him for fear of his imagined pursuers, then hurriedly walked on, jumping at the slight, slightest sound, even, the, even if a leaf cracking under his foot. What do we think? Is it happy? Yeah. yeah. The man seems threatened, so the threatening diction contributes to the frantic tone, or basically, He's being threatened and it's scary. 
and so he's terrified. All right. Gently smiling, her mother tenderly tucked the covers up around the child's neck and carefully, quietly left the room, making sure to leave a comforting ray of light shining through the open door should the child awake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carrie, right? Yeah. And you can tell also that the way I'm reading them changes, right? Mm -hmm. That's part of tone, mm -hmm. right? And you can also see that once I start the sentence and get a grasp of the first few words, and I'm like, oh, this is where this is heading. Mm -hmm. And so I change my tone based on the few, few cues, verbal cues that I have from diction to tell me, oh, well, this is loving. We have a gentle smile. We have a mother, right? Which means that there has to be some kind of love there. The laughing wind skipped through the village, teasing the trees until they danced with anger and conjoling the grass into fighting itself. Blade slapping blade as silly dogs with golf ball eyes and flopping tongues bounded across the lawn. What do we think? It is. It's windy. It's it's windy. That's what it is. But what is the wind doing? It's laughing, right? It's teasing. It's dancing. It's making the, the blades fight itself. It's like a silly dog with golf ball eyes flopping, right? All these things. They just. It's funny, right? So can imagine like the, the they did like the trees dancing or skipping or a silly dog. These are all humorous, and they're happy-go-lucky things. All right, remember what kind of words are there and how do they make you feel? And that my friends is basically diction. These are all fun words that make our life so much better. All right, these are all things that, uh, words that we can replace the normal words that we use, the day-to-day -day words that we use with, you know, instead of saying um, it sounds sad, um, you can say it sounds melancholic. Yes, all of these for the most part, yeah. The more words you know to describe a passage, the more sophisticated your description will be when you analyze the author's writing, okay? Never, ever, 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 never, 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 whatever. Uh, the author uses, say, uh, the author uses diction. Do you mean the author's choice of word? Well, duh. Okay. Always say the author uses whatever kind of diction, indignant, dark, euphoric, to describe it. That's a tip. All right, my good people. So that's it for this lecture. We will be with you in another one.